So good evening. Um, I'm very glad to start the first lecture of the spring series of uh, in Conf at Confluence this uh, this year. And um, I'm more of that, more of glad than to introduce the lecture to to, to introduce Joel with um, Joel Andriano Meariso, who was with long friend, long time friend, and uh, that I know from more than 20 years now. Yeah. And uh, I'm very glad that he has agreed to come for teaching the studio this semester um, to help the student to think a bit differently than usually and a bit different than in a normal school of architecture because we are not normal anymore and uh, less and less. And this semester with uh, everything but architecture thematic, it's more. And this is why uh, I, I thought with uh, Nicolas that Joel could be the good one to do the, to do the studio. And we are listening now to his um, lecture. So I knew him at the beginning as a student in architecture. I knew him after that as a diplomed architect and then as a fashion designer, then an artist, then, I don't know, architect maybe once. <laughs> so this is life. Of architecture, because what is in of, of, of after your study in architecture? Because as I say always, always you are not forced or alone, you are not obliged to become an architect, practicing architect after studies in architecture. What is important is what you do, what you are for, what you like, and what you want to do, and how you want to become. So this is what Joel did, and I'm very glad to have him at school today. I'll just give a little introduction to who Joel is. So he is a Madagascar born artist now, but as um, Adil said, he did very, multiple, multiple things in his life. His work through various mediums seeks to give shape to non explicit narratives, and he draws uh, inspiration from his Malagasy essence, and thus by creates very delicate, often very ambiguous work. And they are to be seen as a series of exercises, really, around the architecture of the feelings we experience, but cannot really name. In 2019, he represented Madagascar at the Venice Biennale. He also had work exhibited in important art institutions around the world, like the Maxi in Rome, the Smithsonian National Museum of African Art in Washington, DC, or the Palais Tokyo in Paris more recently. Um, he also works as an art director for the Accanto Contemporary, an independent space for artists in Antananarivo. And yeah, he does lead the studio at Confluence this semester, questioning what exactly is architecture and how we can create it from our own emotions. And tonight he will be presenting us some of his work. I hope you all enjoy and on to you, Joel. Thank you. Thank you, Adila, and thank you, Barbara. Uh, well, this is... Um, it's very interesting actually to be here. And actually it's not the first time because I think I did my first lecture at the school, I think in 2019, uh, when I actually did this workshop and still very happy to be here and to actually proud also to be, to actually to do a studio, which is a kind of, uh, it's something like more interesting because it's longer and actually we can explore more things. Uh, I think Barbara will introduce actually everything about myself, so I don't have to say many things. But maybe we can, if I have to define actually my work, or if I have to define how I'm actually uh, trying to do something around this big word, uh, I will take first of all the idea and the word called exercise. And this is something very important. I'm going to show you some work, but actually each work actually uh, exercise, an exercise for something, also for nothing. So actually on the on the screen, you can read some few words related actually to the studio that I'm that I'm doing here, but also related to my work. So I just put this first word called game. I think it's very important uh, to 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 use and, and to abuse actually this word called game because I think we are still very young and we are still kids. So I think we have to play the game as a statement of life. I think sometimes you do some good games. Sometimes you also have in some bad games, but it's nice actually to balance with this idea of the game. Second thing is actually the idea of the multiple. 
uh, being multiple, having a multiple vision, having actually uh, a multiple desires, I think it's absolutely important, and especially in our contemporary world. And thanks to Odile, actually, because I learned that thing, you know, from her, that you can be an architect, but at the same time, you can be interested in fashion, you can read many things, you can also try, you know, some food, you can design some plates, and the other, and, and at the same time, you can be in New York, but you can also be in Ivory Coast, doesn't matter. So the idea of like being everywhere at the same time with these diverse emotions and desire, it's very important. And then the last part of, uh, of the presentation, it's not a presentation, but actually of, of the statement, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a list that we can build actually many things from different things. So uh, I'm very inspired by, you know, fragrances, I'm inspired by different forms, I'm inspired by literature, but I always like to take actually, you know, the metaphor of a city as a starting point on a work, because in a city, you have many things. You have life, you have death, you have cars, you have architectures, you have windows, you have plants, you have people, you have emotions, you have gay people, you have straight people, you have uh, black, you have white, you have many things. So I like this kind of huge big box where actually you can find many things and you can be inspired by many things. Well, it's just the introduction, but, um, but as Barbara said, for me, it's also very important to manage naturally uh, three geographies actually uh, on my life and on my work. So I'm based in Paris, where actually I'm living and where I have also actually my studio. I'm also based in Antananarivo, the capital of Madagascar, where also I also live there and I also have a studio. And another place, actually, it's in the countryside of France, which is in Magna Tranche, uh, where I also have a house and sometimes a studio. But I just want to mention the idea of like the trilogy of geographies, the trilogy also of space, which I think is very important. It's very nice to have actually one passport, but the real dream is actually to have more or, or one, maybe two or three or more. Just to say again that it's better actually to be diverse and to open our eyes to everything. Voila, that's the introduction. Um, so I think we can start with, um, with, um, with a work, and you mentioned it, Barbara, actually. It's the one of the latest pieces that I produced, and it's very, well, it's important because actually the art world and the world decide that it's important. Actually, it's the, the piece that I uh, that produced actually for the Madagascar Pavilion in Venice in 2019 uh, during the, the, the Biennale. So, it's a very big work. It's very, it's an immersive work. It's like really huge just to give you, you, we are actually in an architecture school. So I think it's important to mention the dimension. We are around like the pieces around like uh, 17 meters by maybe five meters and then uh, almost seven meters high. So just to give you the, the, the dimension of the piece. It's a compression of thousand and thousand of uh, black paper, uh, silk paper, you know? You wrap actually all those luxurious things with, with this paper. So the piece is there, and I think visually it's interesting, but I prefer actually to tell you the story of, of the piece. Uh, when I received the invitation actually to represent Madagascar in Venice, I was really proud and very happy about this. But it's also very, very strange because it's very complicated. Um, being an artist in Venice and representing actually a country, it's more than just being an artist. Actually, you become an ambassador of a country. So, you know, Odil said before, like, you know, you can be an architect, but it's also, you don't have to be an architect. So at this position, actually, I was the artist, but not only. I become actually an ambassador. I become, at a certain point, a kind of a politician also. So just to give you also an idea of being an artist is beyond you know, the idea of like an artist in this kind of a white cube alone and trying, you know, to figure out with the blank page. It's, uh, it's beyond that. So when I received the invitation, my f I, I didn't add any idea. Of course, all the people told me like, well, why are you not actually uh, doing something who can represent Madagascar? And you have to make something about Madagascar, something that I don't appreciate because I never work like that. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that I'm an artist. So. I decide actually when I built, you know, the first project to remove everything related to Madagascar. So the title of the piece actually is called I Have Forgotten the Night. Just to give you a small explanation, I remove everything. I decide to forget Madagascar, to forget Madagascar actually, you know, for a better future, to make a better representation. So I just decided actually to make a kind of a huge book, which is this huge installation made with thousands and thousands of 
of, of paper. So I think the representation is very international, like there is no the representation of Madagascar on it. There is no baobab, there is no lemons, there is no, I don't know, I don't know your vision of Madagascar, beautiful seas and uh, beautiful uh, flowers. But the, 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 the piece by himself actually, as a, a phys physically, actually it's very international. But for me, the emotion and the spirit of, of Madagascar are inside. So my proposal was actually to see something very international but inside you can feel the spirit. You can read some burned passion about Madagascar, some burned fantasies about Madagascar also inside. Around this pavilion, it was also interesting. I'm not gonna show you everything because we built the piece, but we also built actually a huge communication. And it's what I'm trying actually to, not to teach you, but to explain you during all the studio that doing this piece is not just doing a piece. It's actually seducing the people actually to, come and to visit the piece. It's why you have to work actually on graphic design. It's why you have to work on images also. It's why you have to talk on the way how you talk, uh, uh, the presentation, you know, the presentation is also important. So there was a lot of things around. Uh, oh, sorry, not there. So at the opposite of the black, sometimes I'm wearing white. Like today, I think I have a white t-shirt, so yes. Uh, I have some little light inside of me sometimes. So at the opposite, it was actually, this is a piece that I produced for the Chateau de Chaumont. I don't know if you've been, I invite you to go. Every summer, they actually are uh, doing an art season. Uh, they invite some artists to produce actually some huge pieces from in, for inside the castle. Uh, the Chateau de Chaumont is like along the, the Loire River. And uh, they also invite, you know, some artists to produce something outside, actually in the garden and the park. So it's something that I think it's interesting. You can see something are like very architectural, like uh, I think uh, Kawamata did some beautiful installation actually on the trees. So in 2020, actually I was, 2020, yes, exactly. I was invited actually to show the piece, the previous show that I made for Venice. And this one that I produced, especially for the for the at, at the at this occasion. So, the first one was I have forgotten the night, and this one is called the Labyrinth of Passions White. We are still on the idea of the passion burned, maybe on the black one, and this one the proposal is more about you know like virgin uh, virgin uh, uh, passions, white pages where you can write actually something. The piece is made also with a paper, but behind it, actually, it was in the middle of the big space, and behind you, you have a work with a light, and the light actually is playing a lot also with, with, a, with the vision of the work. Oh. Then, uh, let's continue actually on the white, um, on, on the white elements. Um, I produced this piece, actually, I produced this piece, that, I think, like four times. Uh, the first one, it was actually in 2008. It was actually in, in Brussels, in Belgium. I produced it for a gallery. Then it was shown actually in, in Cotonou, uh, in Benin. Uh, it was shown also in, yes, at the Chateau de Chaumont. And then this one was shown actually at the Fondation Real Rios in Lisbon. So I think, you know, when we're like doing the studio, I think you saw that I'm very interested on this idea of obsession and repetition. Uh, and at the other side, the idea of also of the temporality. And this piece is really dealing with this idea. Uh, the, the first element actually is a piece of paper. So you can see it's a stack of a different, a different paper. The papers are coming actually from a printer. You know, when you're printing a book and then uh, you have actually the extra paper. So they are like, all of them are like about like one meters by uh, 10 centimeters thick. And uh, I just decided to align them actually from a nail on the wall, a very long one, and they are suspended. So there is the, the idea of the pieces, the idea of the suspension, you know, of the time. The piece is tied waiting for the seventh day that will bring us together in the first hour of the night. So temporality is also important, I think, especially in our time. Sometimes we don't have, sometimes we have maybe too much time. So I'm just trying to place actually as an installation uh, a different typology of temporality where something can happen or maybe something can be written also. But they are still like notebooks. Let's go on something maybe more architectural, if it's an architecture, but it's not. 
so that was actually an invitation by uh, Marie-Cécile Zinsou, who has actually a foundation in, in Cotonou. Uh, it's called the, the Fondation Zinsou. She opened the foundation uh, in 2022. Uh, she was actually one of the youngest uh, collector uh, in the continent, in the African continent, and also one of the first private foundations. So the foundation is divided like in three parts. One is actually in the capital in Cotonou, and uh, the second one is in Wida, which is like near the near the beach. And then she decided actually to open uh, this park, kind of an open space museum in the middle of nowhere, actually between the two cities. And one, one of the artists actually would place actually an artwork there. Um, I was very inspired by this idea of a bench, you know, a kind of a very romantic bench where you can sit, you know, for kind of, I don't know, for a romantic meeting or for a date or something. So, I just, I just designed actually, you know, this um, this house or a bench. I don't know exactly, but it's just a sketch of something. There is no real proposal as an architecture or a house or furniture or something. It's really a kind of a capture of the landscape, just like a, a kind of a drawing. It's really something that maybe you can print, you know, the image, and then you can make a, a drawing on it. So it's just the lines of a different uh, of a different lines. Actually, on on one side uh, there was a there was a place that is supposed to be actually a bed where you can live. On the other side, when you see all those levels of the different uh, different lines, uh, a kind of a storage. On the other side, a place where you can sit. So it's a kind of a minimal uh, a minimal location, a minimal house where something can happen, but you have to deal with the landscape. And actually, the 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 the, the the park is absolutely beautiful because you have nothing around. So I just built this one. This this is one of the first pieces that I did. It was in 2016. And now I'm still working on this kind of piece. And now I'm also working with some, some words on it. You will see later. Are you okay? Am, am I too fast or? <laughs> Let's move on to something else. So as I told you before, I also I'm, I'm I'm still doing this kind of work. So that was this one actually was a real challenge because we we it's um it's in another level. It's not in Cotonou where things are like easier in terms of production, easier also actually to work actually with um with a private foundation. And that this one actually was actually an invitation by the Centre des Monuments Historiques check on Google, if you don't know what is it, it's, um, they're actually in charge of all the big monuments like in France, like for example, the, the Arc de Triomphe that you saw with Christo actually was produced by them. So I was invited actually, um, uh, it was last year? Oh yes, so it was last year to, to invade uh, the ramparts of Egmort. Egmort is in the southwest, uh, south southwest of, uh, of France, where actually you have this huge rampart. It was a, it was a port before, and uh, it was one of the biggest show that I never had. Um, I did this show, it was in like, around like almost like two kilometers long. So you had to walk actually around the ramparts to see all the show. And there was like 20 stations where I installed actually different installations. And that was one of the installation. The most interesting thing when you see behind, you see actually, you know, on the ramparts, there are, there are actually some towers around. And I decided actually, because they're like, I don't know, like maybe like 15 towers around, each tower actually has a name and with a symbolic and their historical stories behind. But I decided actually to build my own, my, uh, my own tower. So the piece is called, uh, it's titled uh, La Maison Imaginaire. So um, it's something very, well, actually it's something very serious because uh, technically it was so complicated because the, the ramp was like super high. So they were like almost like 40 meters high. So we had to, to, to suspend it, like to take it, you know, from the ground, to take it on the top. You can check actually there is a videos with like, a, not the helicopters, but all those machines going, taking, taking, it, taking it up. And the volume also of the cube is very interesting because I reproduce actually the volume of the small house next, you know, you see, for example, on the bottom of, of, of the ramparts, you have this, the volume of this kind of a tradition house. So I also did actually do the same volume. So it's about like five by five by 10. And you can pass through also. So you see, sometimes I'm still an architect. <laughs> 
um, something dealing with architecture. So the evolution actually of the structure, the, the structures now are, are well, they're not coming with some words on it. So I did it actually in December. It's a very new piece. It's commissioned by a private foundation called Cloud7. It's in Brussels. And, uh, and well, they invite me actually to produce a piece for the building. So it was a long, long, long discussion because in the beginning, they, well, they, they're expecting for some sculptures, something on the wall. And at the end, I told them like, well, I think um, I would love to do something, you know, like outside and something permanent, of course. And I worked actually on those uh, protection elements of on the facade of the building. I decided to choose actually this um, this uh, this piece because there are like three pieces uh, on the facade. Uh, it's written in love with the world, but I will be home soon. So you are like you have three elements actually on the window. I really like also the window. I think it's a, in terms of architecture, it's very interesting, but it's more about the meaning also. Uh, I start actually the lecture with this idea of like, we have to be, well, it's nice if we can be interested on many things. And I really like this idea of the word. And for me, it's a statement. I'm coming from Madagascar, I'm based in Paris, I'm with you right now, but tomorrow I'll be in Marrakesh and next week, I don't know. So I think it's important. And especially now, I think it's very important after you know, like the pandemic, and now we have a war. I think it's very important that the world we are still like together in the world. I, well, I'm an artist, so I I have nothing to say. I I can't change the world, but at a certain point, if I can give or maybe if I can put some messages somewhere, that will be actually for me the main message: being in love and the world again. I hope you can do the same. And interesting that actually that the school is very international so i think on a certain point like we have all the world around here again and another the biggest one uh yes one of the biggest one actually the the biggest one we will inaugurate it like next week uh on sunday 20th of march but it's very far from not very far from paris in villers cote it's like 45 minutes from paris it's in the middle of forest so this is um a commission uh, from actually the city of Antananarivo, the capital of my hometown, and uh, a real work that I really did with like with the mayor. Um, just to tell you also that it's, um, you know, beyond the work, it's also very important for the country like Madagascar, after like, uh, I don't know, almost like one century of colonization, you know, by the French, uh, we decided actually to remove everything who belongs to French and culture was also removed. So it's interesting and it's really special that actually the mayor of Antananarivo invite an artist actually to place this permanent sculpture in the uh, in front actually of the city hall and the Independence Avenue. Uh, so I did this project. It's uh, it was a long, long, long and very big production. Also, you know, in terms of security because it's in a public space and everything. Uh, but it's also something very new in this city. So we can be in Paris, we can be in New York, but I'm, some, I'm, I'm quite proud about Antananarivo, which is actually, you know, it's really far away from maybe from the idea of being a contemporary or contemporary art, that suddenly we have in this piece there. The meaning of the text is also very important. Uh, and I decided to make it in English. We had the long discussion about, you know, the idea of a language in the studio that uh, I think it's also, it's nice to speak English, but I think it's also important sometimes, you know, to mention our uh, mother language. So I decided to use actually Malagasy, and it's written there, like uh, here you, we we convey all the dreams of the world. This piece is traveling a lot, not the piece, the text is traveling a lot. So this one actually it's permanent in Madagascar in Antananarivo, but during four months, actually the text was also on in front of the Palais de Tokyo on, on top of the door written in French, ici nous portons tous les rêves du monde. So again, the word, the word, the word, and being in love with the word, something important. Uh, I hope you can come to Madagascar once. And actually you have to come to Madagascar and then you have to leave Madagascar if you want to see the piece, because this is actually one of the latest sculpture that I produce for the airport, new airport of Antananarivo. But you can't see the piece when you arrive, you have to see the piece when you leave Madagascar. Uh, same system, metal, 
text structure, everything. But just I want to tell you about something about the text. So I decided actually to, 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 to write actually the poem also in, in Malagasy. And it's just written, are you here or still there? The text is coming from something like maybe more, how can I say that, more popular. Uh, you know, when you are living in an island, uh, most of the people are dreaming of going, you know, somewhere else. So the idea of being somewhere actually is something related to success and staying there is related to drama. So for me, it's a kind of an ironic piece uh, about like, you know, immigration and everything. But beyond all, you are mine. So, you know, Let's move on to something else. Uh, then after Madagascar, let's go to Madrid. You saw the show, Odile. It was something very interesting for me because uh, I think on my practice and also on my career, I think there was some little change actually when I did this exhibition. It was a, it's a gallery show at uh, Sabrina Amrani in Madrid. It's one of the biggest gallery actually in, 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 in the city uh, that I'm working with since now like seven years. and. Um, Actually, well, the, the gallery invited me to, 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 to have another solo show and I was not ready and then I was ready. And then my gallery was not ready because it was actually during the pandemic. I opened it like in January 2021. It was like in the middle of, you know, the drama and everything. But I decided to do it. But I decided actually to express that like, everything, you know, we decided also of like handmade. Um, I just want to let you know that normally, you know, I'm producing these huge pieces, I meet companies and many people around. But since the pandemic, some few things actually changed for me. I decided to go back on this idea of handmade. So I'm doing actually some drawings. I'm also making a lot of collages. I'm also working actually with the flowers. So the show was uh, the title, the show was titled Dancing with the Angels. So I still don't know if the idea of like dancing with the angels are, are kind of a tribute to the angels or maybe a celebration. I don't know if we are talking about joy or, or there is a drama, but there is a kind of half and half. So I'm just, uh, I, would, I will explain you the process actually in the middle of, um, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the space. It's 500 square meter, just to give you the idea of the dimension. Actually, I, I built this black seat the same paper that I'm using uh, with a silk paper, like invading actually like all the space, like a sea or like something dramatic also. And around I suspend actually those new sculptures of uh, made with uh, artificial flowers painted in black. So the angels are actually the, the, the flowers turning around. I don't know if you went to the Palais de Tokyo, but I just I installed actually uh, at the Palais de Tokyo also like three huge installations uh, made with flowers, the artificial flowers that was actually in, in the entrance inside. But just to go back on this idea of like uh, the hand, you know, as an artist also like going back or doing something, I made actually 45 drawings um, on, a, on a textile uh, with a pastel. So there are some bodies, are also just some graphic elements. There are also, you know, the, the landscapes on it. The format are like quite small, they're like 40 by 50. But for me, this show was important with the idea of like, okay, let's go back. Let's do, let's use, you know, the handwritings. Let's also make some drones. I don't know if you saw at the Palais de Tokyo, that was at the entrance. So they're like super huge. They were like seven meters high and like uh, one by one by one meter. The, those pieces also are interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm still telling you the story about the word because uh, for the production of the word, actually, it's not just like combining all the flowers together, uh, working maybe like a florist, but also as a sculptor. But the process before actually, the, the, the combination of everything is also interesting because at the studio, we are collecting actually the flowers from everywhere. So the idea of the everywhere is it's coming from a florist, it's coming actually 
from uh, from uh, single market founded flowers we go on well, on internet we are buying them from everywhere so it's also part of the project like like a uh, one sculpture one structure can hold actually many things from different places there is also something very interesting about you know with the artificial flowers that actually there is also already a kind of a piece a uh, 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 an art action actually when you are doing enough artificial flowers because it, it's already a reproduction of something real to something non-real. So uh, uh, there is a many layers of interpretation on the work. And at the end, the interpretation also of the audience is also very interesting because they are not totally black. Some little colors actually can appear. And then some people are always asking that, why are you uh, uh, putting everything in black? What is the drama? So it's a real question. We can point this color of black so I think with Odile, we had many discussion about this. For me, black is very colorful. I think you agree with that. And it's, it's, for me, it's, it's really a statement. Actually, to, to, get, to find black and to get into black, you need thousands and thousands of colors. And it's very important. And it's very normal. Even if you are mixing you know, the primary colors, actually, you have, to, you have to gain them. And also, the idea of black, for me, it's very interesting because it's, a, it's an exercise that actually it's an ongoing process. It's an ongoing process on a food, like where can we find actually a perfect black food from salt, from maybe caviar, or maybe from, a, you know, the ink from pasta. For the clothes, for example, you know, it's very interesting when you enter, for example, a shop, and then you have like the colorful department and then the black department. It's very interesting how your eye actually is, is working. So it's, it's a work, it's not just a, a color or non-color, it's an exercise, it's a statement, but it's, an, it's, an, it's a perpetual uh, uh, work for me. So yeah, I told you before about this piece. It's very sad now because they removed it like 10 days ago. To go uh, in another place, um, that piece was actually was really made during the pandemic. And um, uh, actually, it's the new contemporary museum of, uh, of Prague, so the Kunsthalle of Prague. So actually, they invite me for a solo show. They invite me exactly like in the beginning of 2020. So we were ready actually to have the show. But then we have the lockdown and everything. So they told me like, let's cancel actually the, 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 the exhibition. And I said, like, oh, it's too sad and I think it's too bad. So I told them look, why we are not building actually an exhibition, uh, not a digital exhibition, but something that we can show digitally, but something also real. So uh, the exhibition was during actually six months. And uh, I sent to the museum every month uh, two pieces that they can show on their own uh, social media, or they can show actually in the museum, but they can invite only like maybe 10 people. So we built some few things, but we built actually this huge piece on front of the museum. Um, so it's an end piece. The technique is very new for me. It was very new also for me because I never tried this one. So you have actually some aluminum. They are based on aluminum and then you have some light on top of it. And for me, it was also important at this time that, uh, okay, we are in Prague and we were actually not allowed to travel anywhere. So I decided to travel actually through the language. So I decided to put in Prague the most exotic language for them, Malagasy, in front of the building. I'm going to give the translation. It's uh, the translation actually is the translation of our, I need some help, Timothy, of our lost uh, desires. desires. And, and our were future passions. So it was a statement, you know, for the, for the, for the period. It was very successful because uh, on the newspaper, apparently they were written that uh, uh, it's a kind of a political text. Some people said also that uh, they brought some Malagasy people inside and they are like making something about Madagascar inside. But it's also interesting that we are still trying to talk about the world, but some country doesn't know anything about other countries. So Madagascar in, in, in Prague was so, was so interesting. Going back in France, that was also a piece that I produced in 2020. Um, the show was open actually during one month only and i 
it was very sad because uh, everything was a new production and everything. And uh, I just decided that let's use actually, you know, this this bad idea, this bad moment, you know, as a real statement. So I just produced this new text neon in the facade of the museum, uh, the museum, uh, the Musée d'Art Roger Quillot, which is actually the Musée des Beaux Arts of Clermont Ferrand. This text and it's still there. I think it will stay. It will become actually a permanent. It will be, become a, actually a permanent piece. And uh, I just wrote that uh, maybe before it was better. Before maybe we were like uh, we were in love. Before things were like maybe more easy. So it's also interesting, you know. Well, interesting. I also want to mention that most of the texts are like very poetic, but behind the poetical aspect of the work, actually, they are like very political most of the time. So there are kind of a double uh, double messages actually inside of them. It's also very interesting because uh, it's the first time, normally I'm producing uh, my Neon actually in Venice, in Murano, and also in, in, in Madrid. And that was the first time that I produced actually uh, this, the, 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 this Neon actually in Clermont-Ferrand in this kind of very French small company. So interesting to become in like be very local sometimes. Let's move on to textile because it's also very important. Let's travel on the other side of, um, of the world. We are going to Dallas. So Dallas Contemporary. I'll invite you to visit this museum once if you have actually a chance to go there because it's an amazing platform. You have actually the Contemporary Museum, but the Dallas Contemporary is in another museum, which is a real contemporary museum, but it's really a platform that they always in, invite some, something different. So it can be an architectural show, then it can be a show with an artist, then it can be fashion. So they are... The diversity is always there. So I, I was invited actually to have this solo show uh, curated by uh, an amazing curator called Laurie Ann Farrell. And we had a long discussion actually when we, when we built this show because we knew each other since many years and she was following my work. So she decided actually to build a kind of a small retrospective about uh, who I am and what are my desires and uh, what's, what's, uh, what's going on. So the show is very architectural in terms of just like definition because actually it's made uh, with uh, eight chapters. Everything is made with chapters and actually the sections are made actually, you know, with those curtains made with textile. To make it like uh, more diverse and also super black at the same time. Actually, when you see all the curtains, they are a combination actually of a different textile founded like all around the world first to make this, uh, to, to, those, uh, those, big, uh, those big elements. So uh, I forgot the title of, oh yes. The title of the show was uh, Seren Serenade is not dead. And again, with this idea, like uh, we were so very much in love, but actually we are still, we are still alive. There is a kind of hope behind. Uh, I built actually uh, eight chapters of a certain kind of love. So for example, on the left part of the screen, you can see this white table on top of it. There were actually like installation made with roses. They were like black roses. They are real black. There was a kind of a chemical action actually to, to make them black. Then, uh, well, in the middle, but you don't see them very well. They're also like a suspension of a different clothes. Um, and it's interesting when, when Odile Tour said that I was actually a fashion designer. I was never a fashion designer, but I have a lot of interest in clothes. So I designed some few things like many years ago. So we redesigned them, we, we reproduced them again. Um, on this part, you have actually uh, one piece made also with paper. In the middle, you have some elements from this project that I'm doing called the uh, Sentimental Products, very inspired by uh, Marcel Duchamp. When uh, it's a founded object and I'm, I'm giving them new names with new labels and, and, and new poetry. And then the piece that you have in the front is called uh, Emptiness. Uh, and it's more like it's actually four layers of, uh, of textile and curtains that you, that you can pass through. And we will finish actually with this picture uh, and with this work, which actually also can combine everything. Uh, the piece is styled vest, uh, Vestiges of Ecstasy. It's a very long process. Uh, I think I start this project, I think like almost like four years ago, and I present them uh, in Egmont on this huge project on the ramparts of Egmont. It was one of the stations uh, on the show. And it's a collection of almost like 3,000 objects, all painted in black. 
So the the aspect of the the, the installation actually it's like a it's like a big post uh, OG or or kind of big you know. I don't know, reception. So you have glasses, bottles, chandelier, everything around. But they were like on display, like in a rounded, uh, in a rounded space with a very specific uh, paint actually on the floor, shiny. It was great, but actually with some reflection on it. And again, and I think to conclude also the lecture that, um, that I think it's, it's my vision of the world that of course, everything will be painted in black without any drama. But of course, with a lot of color on those black things, but also to say that on this on this very kind of a very condensed installation, there are a lot of diversity. So if you go on the focus, for example, and these objects actually are not just like a cheap objects. You can have actually a chandelier from the 19th century, uh, made with bronze. You have actually one vase for, uh, that I found like in Valoris. You have some drinks, you have some wine, you have some, some, some glasses, you have different elements. So it's, I think this image can define something called like mon univers, and I'm using the word in French, and I don't like this word because I think as an artist, it's very complex to define it like that, but this is maybe can define my, my framework and also my interests in life and my also my interests in general. That's all, my dear friends. <laughs>